The small towns of England are amazing, full of life, love, humanity and honest human beings. And this is a documentary about those small towns, filmed in May 2016 on a tour that we called Small Town Celebrations. I'm Beans on Toast, a folk singer of sorts, and I've been lucky enough to tour all over the world singing my simple songs to people. But if my music were to have a home, I guess it wouldn't be too different from the house that I grew up in, a semi-detached, three-bedroom affair on a suburban street in a town that nobody's really heard of. Now, I love touring. I love everything about it. The travel, the places, the friends, the faces, the drinking, the singing, the arriving and the leaving. So for this tour, we wanted to stray from the obvious touring path, visit places that we'd never heard of. We also wanted to make a film, talk to people about their towns and why they're great, experience some local culture, hear some local stories, meet up with musicians and poets and artists. We wanted to have a good time. When I say we, I mean myself, my wonderful wife, Lizzie B, the one and only Mr. Bobby Banjo, and country singer Sky Smead. Now Sky's from a small town in Kansas, and prior to this trip he'd never been to England before. The original idea was to have some hot up-and-coming filmmaker come with us to make the documentary. But it turns out that hot new up-and-coming filmmakers are pretty expensive. So we splashed out on a camera and did it ourselves. Here goes. The first show was in St Albans. Now a couple of points. Firstly, St Albans is a city, not a town. I've also I've been there many times to play the horn where the first show was. So already we'd broken the kind of rules that we set out. But the horn's a great venue run by a brilliant team of people that work really hard to make sure that live music has a home in St Albans. So it kind of seemed like a decent enough place to start. This time around, Bob and I went up early, checked out the town and found this awesome park where Bob got pretty excited about these ancient ruins. St Albans is named after uh, St Alban. And here's a bit of Roman wool for you. One of the best things about being a songwriter is the community of songwriters that help each other out. I'm not sure if there's any other profession that will inspire the hospitality you get from strangers, either people who like your songs or fellow musicians who understand an unsaid code of conduct. So the easiest way to get to know these towns was to talk to musicians who live there. For each show, we worked with the promoters and friends of friends to ensure that we had a local artist on the bill every night. I got in touch with all of them before we started and explained about the tour. We asked if we could meet up, maybe film them doing a song and interview them about the town. people that want to make a change, make a difference and just bring music to the world and just, just make it more accessible to everyone. Like, I don't think you can give anything to a venue more than that. Before the tour started, I sent out a press release about the tour as you do to drum up a bit of promotion on the hope that people actually come to the shows. Now this press release was pretty dramatic, saying shit like a journey into the heart of England. It promised daily activities ranging from visits to tourist attractions to a game of rounders down the park. In hindsight, I don't really know what I was thinking. I haven't played round and since I was about 12 years old. And as the tour approached, I did start to wonder what the fuck I'd got myself into. I'm pretty sure I was going to end up looking like a right tit. Once we took to the stage in St Albans, my worries disappeared. It was a brilliant gig, even if I do say so myself. And I realised that even though I wanted to do this project, the gig was really what mattered. And that I just let the rest fall into place. We interviewed some people after the show until things got blurry to remember. Woke up the next day and headed for Milton Keynes. Window shopping is a homeless man Still believing in a hard work Find his wife and kiss his kids goodnight Forget about the things she did that night 
Don't you think it's amazing, friend? Human spirit and just such things. I just hope I can find such strength. We saw the cause I had. Milton Keynes is a classic example of an English town that gets a lot of shit, generally by people that have never even been there. This was my first time and we were bang up for a celebration, even if it was absolutely tipping it down. First stop was the Concrete Cows. We made our way there on the Redway, which is a 125 mile long footpath that snakes around the town. What an awesome idea. The Milton Keynes gig was at a venue called MK11, set just outside of town, this really beautiful pub with a kind of venue and a snooker club and a bit like a local hangout. We met up with a local folk duo called Hope and High Water. And they're fucking brilliant. Yeah, I think the nice thing about Milton Keynes is pretty much wherever you go, you're within like 10 minutes from a park or something. And I think people have this really, this idea of it as being incredibly concrete and just like, just, the, just shops after shops after shops, which is kind of true in the centre in a way. But actually there's canals, there's the countryside, there's um, parks, and it's kind of been planned in a way which kind of has a certain connotation but it's been planned in a way that actually people can enjoy their leisure time in a bit of greenery. Melvin Keynes celebration Right Sunny Kings Lynn <laughs> Bob's looking very different in his new summer attire brown shrimp so and maybe mussels and oysters they have around here as well so tell us about brown shrimp so it's uh, one of the most underrated east coast products i think no one really shouts about it um it's really sort of tiny little brown shrimp and uh sweet and sort of briny and it's one of the best things that comes from norfolk kings lynn in particular because of the wash it was a beautiful sunny day in Kings Lynn. We spent the afternoon by the river and searching the town for Bob's brown shrimp. Much to our confusion, no pubs, restaurants or cafes in Kings Lynn seemed to serve it. We don't do any of that trendy stuff around here. We were told by a cantankerous landlord of a pub on the river. I'm not really sure what he thought we was after. But we didn't let it get us down and we headed to Kings Lynn Working Man's Club for the gig. <laughs> It turned out that quite a few shows on this tour ended up being in working man's clubs. Personally, I think they're brilliant and they hark back to an almost forgotten England, a time when drinking and socialising was kept simple before all the trendy stuff appeared. It was a fun gig with a lot of disco ball action and we had good chats with the locals after the show. Turns out they'd never heard of brown shrimp either. I haven't heard about brown shrimp for Kingsley. Is that a thing? Hi guys. <laughs> Next up was Warsop, a small town in Nottinghamshire. I'd never heard of Warsop before, but it's an ace little town and I'm pretty sure I'll be returning. Playing with us this evening was Brad Deer. I've played a few shows with Brad over the years and he lives with a short walk from the venue. So he invited us around for a cup of tea. Further on, well, further up the road, sort of up there, you've got Warsop Vale. And there used to be a pit there, with Warsop being a mining town. And you've also got like Welbeck Colliery, which the pit was closed in Warsaw Vale in 1989. They've been going for 95 years. The venue was again in a working man's club, 
called the Black Market, this huge versatile space with the capacity to put on shows of all sizes over its three different stages. Immediately the place had a brilliant vibe. We learnt later that it's run by a chap called Dave from the band The Star Botherers, who are also playing on the bill. Top band as well. We are at a car boot fair. En route to Cannock, we went to a car boot sale. As always with car boots, it was ace and random as you like. It's refreshing to know that you can still buy things for 50p sometimes. Cannock is a town in Staffordshire, it's just north of Birmingham. I'd never been there before, however with the car boot activities it did mean that we got into Cannock a little bit late, not leaving a huge amount of time to explore the town. However, we did take Sky for a classic English delicacy, that is a chicken vindaloo. <laughs> Sky, so join us, we are in Cannock, we haven't done much connecting with Cannock today because comes from the Celtic word Canock, meaning uh, high place. And Canuck being in the Midlands, we are having a curry to show Sky how they do things in the Midlands. So, hello and welcome, Sky. Thank you. It's good to be here. Where are you from? I'm from Chinook, Kansas. Can you tell us a little bit about Chinook, Kansas? Chinook, Kansas is in southeast Kansas. Kansas is a large state. It takes eight hours to drive east to west, and it's a straight shot. Um, it's a small town. It was Saturday night, and the show was at a brand new venue called The Station, cleverly situated in the bus station. It was a rowdy gig. Canuck was very drunk. So were we. It was fun, but it did mean that the camera didn't get too much attention. Uh, sorry about that. Fear not, though, because the following day, we went to Hebden Bridge. <laughs> Now I've been to Hebden Bridge before, quite a few times actually, and I absolutely love it. It's a magical town known for its witches, creativity, its pure beauty and, and its music venue, the Trades and Social Club, which is one of my favourite music venues in the whole country. In order to avoid a canic hangover, we hot-footed to Hardcastle Crags, a national trust park just outside of town. Last time we were here we heard rumours of a waterfall, so we went looking for it. You can go up on the main road, can't you? Get around that way, apparently. Uh, but you, you, you're not, you're not some two or three k or something like that. You know, I should think two and a half. So we turn off at that little yeah. table. Yeah. If you miss it, then I guess you just carry on straight until you get to these. I think these are deserted. These barns here. Cool. Uh, so that you can turn off sort of right there. Brilliant. And it, I would think it's signposted. I mean, it's, it should be, shouldn't it? It's a, it's a Lum, lum hole. Yeah, and cool. it says waterfall underneath it, so I'm thinking it must be that. After an incredible hike through the classic English countryside, we found the waterfall. Seems other people had found it too, and there was a small gathering of folk enjoying the weather, the waterfall and its surroundings. We didn't have a huge amount of time to dilly-dally, so we stripped down to our boxes and got into the pool under the water. <laughs> it's impossible to explain just how cold the water was. So cold it made you feel hot, and it took everything out of you. It also made you feel incredibly alive, fresh, clean and crisp. Oh, this guy's going to do it. Talk about pop music. Girl meets boy, boy meets girl. Girl leaves boy, finds new girl. And somewhere in between, the record slides from 45 to 33 and a third, and a voice that's heard says, flies all green on Bunsen in his dungeon of despair. Prisoners mumble and miss their clothes and scratch their mind hair. On the build tonight was a band called Ten Sheds, a local duo that played piano and drums. It pains me to say that we didn't get a recording of them doing a tune to camera because they're one of the best bands I've seen for ages. Please do check them out. As usual, Liz and the team at the trades looked after us and it was an extremely enjoyable gig that ended with a kind of hoot and nanny with all the bands and some old friends all up on stage at the same time.
It's probably worth mentioning that when we first decided to do this, we had no idea whether it would work, if anyone would actually come to the gigs or give a shit about us coming to town. Maybe the reason that not many bands play in small towns is simply because people aren't fussed about going to shows. I've played in many an empty room in the past, and I'm sure I will in the future, so I tried not to dwell on it too much. One show that I did have concerns about, though, was Bolton, mainly for the fact it was on a Monday night, which is by far the hardest day to put on a show, especially in a town that I've never played, and not really heard great reports about in the past, or for that matter in the lead up to the show. So imagine my excitement when not only did people turn up, but I would say that it was here in Bolton on a Monday night that the Small Town Celebrations tour really found its foot. I mean, before that, I mean, obviously Bolton was the greatest industrial town in the world. And um, from a poetic point of view, there was actually um, a community of people. Who, there's, there's still a plaque down on Silverwell Street in Bolton, in the centre of town, um, of people that were going to um, live their lives um, under the influence of Walt Whitman. We had a blast. Everyone that came seemed super appreciative of the fact that we'd come to Bolton and were well up for celebrating their town. They were all really proud of where they were from and they were all good people. Somewhere along the way I became a Bolton Wanderers fan. Hanging out after the show we met Matt Carr, the owner of Carr's Pasties, a Bolton institution. When interviewing Matt and asking him about his business, he invited us to take a look around the factory the following day. Amazing. Um, and we bake all our stuff from here on the edge of Bolton. We've got three shops. And we're one of those small but perfectly formed companies where we don't do too much, but what we do, people seem to like. Like these people here, look. Yeah. So you guys are from Bolton? Yeah. yeah. Car is the best. This is genuinely my Charlie and the Chocolate factory moment. <laughs> <laughs> and before you know it, we're all wearing hair nets and getting a guided tour. We took a bunch of newfound friends from the gig and Matt told us all about the importance of family, pride and quality in business. So all I really wanted to say really about this place is we peel our own spuds in the morning, we go to um, bowl of meat for our, for, our, uh, for our beef and we get uh, 95% visually lean body beef so it's like we compete with the restaurants, pay loads of money for that. The cheese that we use is from the Ribble Valley from Proctor's Farm. It's, caught, it's actually individually branded as kick-ass cheese. It's really strong cheddar. And we, we just spend a lot of money on the ingredients to make sure that it's, that it's all sweet. And then it all gets made fresh in those pans every day. And then it all gets boiled in. Most pie firms don't do it. They'll just get cheaper ingredients and they'll actually make it and then chill it down and make the stuff the next day. Well, then you don't get fresh food. So we're all about fresh food and blast freezing it or sticking it in the oven straight away. Um, so that's us. Hello. <laughs> We're here in Cheltenham with Katie Collins uh, in the, the, back, the back room of the Frog and Fiddle. Katie's going to do a tune. Turns out she's not from Cheltenham, she's from Braintree, which is, <laughs> where, which is where I'm from. And did you go to Nottingham as well? I then? did, yeah. So we went to the same school. Wow. Great. All right, well, jump out and you can do your tune. <laughs> I hear you drum, drum, drum as the walls collapse As the ceiling falls down piece by piece Well, 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 the my chaps You finally made my walkie bend But guess what? You missed the train Earlier in the day we received the sad, sad news that Guy Clark had passed away undoubtedly one of the all-time greats. Sky knew a couple of Guy Clark's songs and we planned to do one in his honour that night. The song we picked was a brilliant blues number called Worry Be Gone and it's all about smoking weed. In Guy Clark's honour we performed the song at the show that night, then scored some weed, wandered the streets of Cheltenham for a bit and ended up in a very colourful chicken shop singing the song again. do 
Andy, uh, relegated football team. I completed, yeah, actually, a small fact, I completed Swindon Town in my 1995 Premiership sticker book. <laughs> First out of any other team. In Swindon, another town that people are often very cynical about, we had a great time. We met up with Tams in Quinn, and the show was promoted by an old buddy, Kieran, who puts on shows in Swindon and devices where he lives. I once spent a day with him on his allotment and kind of hoped that today we'd be able to do that, but alas, it didn't happen. Don't worry yourselves though, because after the show, Swindon supplied the karaoke. I, I love it down here. And yeah, the town is, it's got, it's got everything you want. There's some quirky little stuff. There's there's a lot of people doing stuff for themselves. It's not all like you go to Pannier Market and there's people making stained glass and making jewellery and carve, carving. There's a load of pottery. You've got Biddeford Pottery, which is a class of pottery on its own. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Before we went to the show in Biddeford, we went to visit our friends Chunk and Lorna from the Green Brownie Stall. They recently upped sticks from South London and moved to a small farm down in Devon with chickens, pigs and a couple of goats. We then met up with local graffiti artist Mel Sags, who took us around town showing us her work and explaining how the town inspired her. There's yeah, loads of starlings live under the um, new bridge and the old bridge. Um, so I decided to focus on that in the artwork. All of that um, is the key, I stenciled the key. We set out to celebrate the small towns of England and to visit them and, uh, and it turns out they're fucking beautiful if you want them to be, so here we go, get them back. The morning after the Biddeford show, we went to Western Ho, which is on the coast with a huge, brilliant beach, where we did a bit of crabbing, played a bit of frisbee. The show that evening was in Newton Abbott, and we have absolutely no footage of Newton Abbott at all. At this point of the tour, both Lizzie and Bob had to head home for life commitments, leaving Sky and myself alone. The next four days felt a little bit like mum and dad had gone on holiday and we were the kids left at home alone. We did survive though, we had a great show at the Jolly Farmer and we met up with my buddy George. This, Everyone together. this is George, the watercolourist. I haven't got my paintbrush, but I will. Um, we're going to grab some guys from Beams' gig from last night. They're all up for a bit of a magical mystery tour on Dartmoor and we're going to paint Dartmoor. So right, we need some materials, we're in hobby craft. Let's do Let's it. Do it. I met George at Stonehenge on winter solstice and he was taking rubbings of the stones. He's a farmer and an artist and grew up in Devon on a family farm. He offered to take us for a watercolour lesson on Dartmoor. We invited a shitload of people from the gig but only a small handful turned up, probably because it was pissing it down. Like really pissing it down. We still did the class, but from inside the van. <laughs> we have to do the, the, the yeah, we have yeah. to do the windshield okay. wipers. So with watercolour painting, right? You've got, you've got the, you start off no, light. Cardboard, so. It's <laughs> in a very light colour. So get on your where well, you got your mixing palette. You can literally start getting your colours. Work to light using the yellows, your ochres. And start like a base to so work light. So basically, if you're looking up there, you've kind of got a light ochre yellowy ground. So maybe let's just mark out a block for the the hip, the rolling hill. So a bit of local knowledge, if you ever are stuck on the moor in a remote area where you have no idea where you are, the fog comes in, 
and you just you're lost head towards the river stream and head downstream and you'll end up in a settlement at some point you'll be safe for reasons out of our control that evening's show in Totnes had been cancelled, something to do with problems at the venue. We'd put word out online and managed to save the gig and move it to a different pub. We'd also been pretty slack and uh, hadn't sorted anywhere to stay for the night. It being the weekend, Totnes being a popular place, it seemed all hotels were booked up. But we found a pub called the Church House Inn with some spare rooms. It was in a little village called Tor Bryan. This was an old pub, like really old pub, definitely haunted. And it soon became my new favourite boozer. We headed into Totnes, did the show and got back to the church house in as quick as we could. We were kind of hoping to get back before the bar shut, but when we were returned, all the staff were gone. However, the bar was open, so we stayed up all night drinking. Paying for the drinks, but pretty much helping ourselves. We saw a few ghosts, communicated with some ancient spirits, and wrote a song called Little River, based around George's granddad's advice on navigating the moor. Now, we didn't film any of this because, well, because we were pissed and we didn't want to upset the ghosts. Everybody knows that ghosts are camera shy. The sun was shining as we rolled into Nuki and everyone was out in force enjoying the sunshine and their lives in this super special Cornish town. Youngest old man was also playing tonight. He was an amazing host and he'd gone all out. As well as sorting us a sweet place to stay for the night, he agreed to take us surfing. We've got some surfboards, we've got wetsuits, sun shining and surf's up. Now you can't carry a camera when you're carrying a surfboard, so the camera stayed in the car and we hit the beach. I've nabbed these shots from the 90s classic Point Break. And I wish I could tell you that my surfing experience looked something like this, but I'm afraid it was just not the case. I got the absolute shit kicked out of me. Spun around, underwater, knocked over. I swallowed about three pints of seawater and was spat back out onto the beach. The lifeguard then told me the tide was coming in and the waves were going to get dumpy and to be careful. Fuck that. I didn't go back in. I was too scared. I wish I was a surfer, but I'm not. I decided to stick to drinking and singing. Which worked out because the folks who ran Whiskers this evening's venue were an absolutely ace bunch of people and the show was an epic one. I think I might have even got naked. Hello? Is anybody there? I'm not sure if there's actually anybody still watching this, but if you are, uh, thanks. Um, we've just hit the 30 minute mark of the film. I've been editing for a couple of days now and uh, I was hoping to make the film 30 minutes long. Um, and I, I'm not going to go back now and start chopping with stuff. So we're just going to soldier on. Three more gigs to go. Um, okay, so where were we? Um, okay, we picked up Lizzie and Bob and headed to Paul to play at Mr. Kipps. <laughs> He 
last thing I heard, he'd run straight back to hell. As if one day the current literally just fell. So I think the biggest show we had recently was definitely Joe Bonamassa, who usually plays 5,000, 6,000 capacity arena shows, um, and came back here to do a one-off gig uh, based on the fact that Kip, Mr. Kip over here managed to uh, secure him early, early on in his early days, supported him, paid for his first flights over here, and uh, Joe kindly came back and you know did, did a show here for 300 people when he's usually around playing for five, 6,000. Next up is Redin, where we met Ben Morse, a friend and actually a really good filmmaker. Um, but we point the camera at him while he dishes out some wild Brian Adams myths. Hickey's is allegedly the site that Brian Adams bought his first guitar. As in the one from Summer of 69. As in the one from Summer of 69. Um, we also meet the August list, a phenomenal duo. The last show of the tour is in South End, Essex, the county where both Bob and I are from. We hit up Lee on Sea, which is a sweet coastal spot nearby, and Bob stumbles across some brown shrimp. Brown shrimp? <laughs> we found them. Strangely, we never really play Essex much. Chinneries in South End is a legendary venue on the seafront, and I've never even played there before, so I'm super excited. Bob, on the other hand, has played it loads. I think he used to play in Battle of the Bands when he was in school and stuff like that. We also played a bit of Crazy Golf and got a song from local guy, Stan Blade. Every town and we keep our head down because we don't want no trouble. But trouble seems to find us somehow because there's always some guy who wants to fight. Because he's had too many pints like that man over there, the one without any hair. He's so angry, so mad, so sad. Well, let's blame the drink, so blame the drink tonight. But I'm a South End Nard man through and through. But only when I'm with my ten man crew. South End Hard Man through and through. But only when I'm with my ten man crew. Said I'm a South End Hard Man through and through. Only when I'm with my ten man crew. South End Hard Man through and through. Alright. <laughs> And that's it folks, that brings our tour and this documentary to a close. It's one of the best tours that I've ever done and I honestly feel like I've learned a lot. Putting in that little bit of extra effort goes a long way, giving a shit about other people's art, music, stories and lives, celebrating the simple things. I know the world is full of trouble, unfairness and tragedy, I'm no fool. But we're here now and this is our shot, so celebrate. Celebrate each other, celebrate culture and creativity and always be proud of where you're from. I spend my days on the road Singing songs at camera phones It takes me here, it takes me there It took me back to the Harlow Square Well I grew up just a few towns over I used to come here when I was younger So I'm excited to be back It makes me feel all nostalgic Back in the day we were the Mud Hills crew We'd all hang out together Scruffy little kids in bands Like Jennifer, Angelico and Waster Does anyone remember Budapest? And if so, I want to say hi I've been thinking a lot about the old days Down at the Harlow Square tonight